welcomed me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did also for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and all his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison, and we did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whenever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment. But the righteous will have eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Ever equipping God, as I speak, may you increase and I decrease. May the words you have given me for this message be seeds that rest in our hearts that we might bear fruit for you here on earth. May I be bold and courageous in speaking what it is you've given me to speak. And may we as your people have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Building a kingdom. I often wonder what's the design plan for building a kingdom. I mean, if you think of it, it can be kind of overwhelming. Whatever your kingdom is, whether it's your small business or it's your job at school or you're a doctor and you're trying to establish a practice or an attorney and trying to establish whatever your kingdom is, you're building, what's the plan? For the church, we often get caught up in what's the latest programming. What's the latest style? What are they doing on the fastest growing churches? What are they doing so we can model our church just like theirs? And lots of churches have died trying to do what the others have done. But the text today says if you're going to build the kingdom, this is how you do it. This is exactly how if you're going to believe in the Christ... This is how you build the kingdom of God. Whether you be a small business owner, whether you be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or whatever you're building your kingdom around, this is how you build a kingdom. And the answer is simple. One person at a time. It's how we build the church. One person loving one other person and two together they see the Christ in one another and they keep coming and they get to be the church. Because we're focused on the Christ. But there will come a day when we'll be judged on how our kingdom was built. How we established a kingdom on earth. And who we established that kingdom with. And we'll be accountable for how we've loved one another. And it's not by any particular commandment. It's by how we've loved one another. And often we look at this text. I've preached this text several times. And I've been involved with the ministry that the text is completely their mission statement. And they help refugees who, who are need, uh, needing asylum. They help refugees in this world. 
get established where they can have peace and be felt and loved and be, and be known that they're loved. And they use this scripture as their whole mission statement. And it's something we as the people of God need to look at, especially at this day and time in our lives. Because interaction between one another is something that's not encouraged in our world at this time. But God says we have to keep loving one another. We have to keep loving one another. We have to keep building a kingdom of God and loving one another as God has loved us. And he sent to us Christ Jesus. I want to know something. When you accepted Christ in your life, do you believe that Christ saw God's creation in you? Do you believe God looked at you and, and through Christ, Christ saw your worthiness? You obviously said yes to a relationship with Jesus and saw the worthiness of being a part of the kingdom. That's the easy part because then the work comes in. When you say yes to an organization or you say yes to a commitment, that's the easy part. The next part is learning how to love one another as Christ loves us. Living into the fulfillment of the greatest commandment. Loving God and loving others as ourselves. And today, Jesus tells a metaphor of what it'll be like when we get to heaven. Did we have eyes that see? Did we have ears that hear? Do we have a heart that senses? Do we have a mind that works on how to solve a situation? And not from our selfish intent, so that we can be glorified, but so that God can be glorified. I don't know how his day started. I don't. But I wonder if he started the day off praying, God, let somebody see me today. God, you know my life. Help me meet the needs of my family today. Move in my life, God, because I'm at a place in my life I can't do it by myself anymore. I wonder if that was his prayer. Because his life that day found him standing in a parking lot. Doing what I think would be the most humbling thing to do in any person's life. He found himself in a parking lot. Walking up to complete strangers. And asking one question. Do you have any work I can do for food? What does it take for a human being to be in that situation? What does it take for us as Christ community to let people get in that situation? There's lots of us who are sitting on the pews right now. You know what? We're just as hungry as he was. And there are people who have need clothing this week and we provided clothing. And you know what? We're just as naked as they are. And we are imprisoned in our own prisons. Because we're afraid to let God in. We're afraid to, to be the, Christ, the one that Christ calls us to be. And to be able to see the Jesus in other people. We have the same cry I think that young man had on his day. When he found himself in a superstore parking lot, walking up to people in their cars and saying, do you have uh, some work? He didn't ask for money. He wanted to work so that he could eat. Well, do you see, do you know what he's really asking? He was asking, do you see the Jesus in me? Now, he didn't put it that way, and we wouldn't put it that way. But what he was asking was, I know God made me, do you see me as a creation of God? Have you ever had that happen to you? A complete stranger walks up to you and asks you for money or asks you for food or asks you for gas. I mean, I know of an instance where a lady one time, two teenage kids walked up to her in a store, in a store parking lot and they said, ma'am, um, our family's traveling and we've run out of gas. And she said, well, just meet me right here around the corner and, and I'll fill your family car up with gas. They showed up in a yellow dog school bus. 
but she saw the humanity in that person. And I wonder if we as people of God allow ourselves, even amongst the people in the pews, to let the Jesus be seen in us. Because some of us are pretty needy. Some of us need clothed. Some of us need affirmed. Some of us need, need released from our prison. Some of us need to be welcomed from the fringes of our community into the core of our community. We don't need to be the stranger anymore, but we're afraid because you may not see the Jesus in me. Because you don't want to see the Jesus in me. Because if you see the Jesus in me, then it's going to require something of you. Because if you have the Jesus in you and you see the Jesus in me, then God calls us to care for one another. God calls us that if we're going to build the kingdom of God, we have to allow Christ not only to shine from us, but for Christ to shine into us. And it's the way we look at the world. Are we willing to allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough and out of control enough, wherever we go and whatever we do, to see the Jesus in other people? And if we see the Jesus in other people, then we must admit that we have the Jesus in us. And those are big churchy terms, but you know what that means? That means that I can look at the man who's standing in the parking lot and I can accept his woundedness because I have woundedness. I can ex accept his shortcomings because I have shortcomings. I can accept that he's on hard times because I've been on hard times. Are we, are we as people of God willing enough to open our spirit to the Christ and to be kingdom builders, not by hammer and nail, but by eyesight to eyesight and heart to heart to move. I don't know what his prayer was that morning, that morning, but I do know something moved him to seek help. I don't even know if he was a Christian, but I know as a creation of God, he humbled himself to go before the people. Have you ever been that humble? Humble enough to lay yourself before God and say, God, whatever I need to do today to eat, I'll do. And I promise you, that's hard to do to go ask somebody. At least for people, it's hard to ask. And I don't know what her prayer was. I mean, I'm pretty sure I know what her prayer was. Before she ever got out of bed. God, just let me be a light unto the world. Let me, let me be vulnerable enough that others might see Jesus in me. I mean, that's the prayer we're asked to pray, isn't it? That every day before we get out of bed, before we put our feet on the ground, that we, we give up control. God, wherever. Whatever, whatever needs to be done to build the kingdom today, use me. If I need to be silly and act silly and do whatever I need to do to relate to some little kid, then let me be that silly. If I need to pick up a hammer and drive nails to help somebody build their house, let me have the skills to do that. She had just finished shopping. Her cart was full of groceries. She's a working woman who works all day. She has a family to take care of, a marriage to take care of. And she had gotten these couple of hours to go to the superstore and to, to pile her cart full of groceries. And he saw her. She was wheeling to her nice car and pushing her grocery basket along the way. Now, she's been trained in to look out for strangers and she's a vulnerable woman if she's out there by herself and what goes on in superstore parking lots and things that, that aren't good. All those things have been schooled and taught. And from a distance, he comes walking and her cart's full of groceries. And there's no way she can get the groceries undone before she, he gets to her car. She sees him coming and in her mind, she remembers those stories of things that have happened to people when men have approached vulnerable women in parking lots of superstores. 
She pops the trunk and she starts to put her groceries in the back of the car and all the while looking out of the corner eye and he's getting closer. And he's not the best dressed man in the world and he probably smells a little bit, but he's getting closer. But she remembers one thing. She remembers what she prayed that morning. God, let people see Jesus in me. Take care of me and my family today and let Jesus see people. Just let me shine a little of your light. And he's standing right at her car. Between her and the trunk. And he looks her in the eye. And he says, ma'am, do you have any work I can do for food? Can you imagine the relief that went over her? I mean, all the things that are built up and the hype that's built up about being safe in parking lots these days, there had to be a sense of relief. And she looked him in the eye and her cart was still half full and, and it crossed her mind that maybe, maybe if he just worked and helped me put the groceries in or, or something, I just don't have any work for him. But God, I see the Jesus in the man that's in front of me. What can I do? How many of us allow ourselves to be that vulnerable in our lives? That even in the intimate details of our lives, we encounter a stranger and we welcome the stranger in to say, you are a person of God no matter where you are or what's going on in your life. It may be the chairman of the board of the church. It may be somebody else in the church that you've known forever, but being vulnerable and needs to be recognized as a child of God where we can step in and help. It just happened to be a stranger. And she said to him the word we all hate to say. No, I don't have any work. I don't have any work. And can you imagine his head had to be dejected. He had to look down. He had to look at the cart that was full of groceries and say, uh, work. And then she said this. See that fast food restaurant right there? If you'll just meet me over there in that parking lot, when I get through here, I'll go buy you some food. I see Jesus in you. Do you see Jesus in me? He said, thank you. And he went back over across the parking lot and she went ahead and she put her groceries in her car and she drove around to the fast food restaurant and she went through the line and she ordered and after she drove past the window, he appeared. She rolled down her window and handed the food to him. He said thank you and he went and he sat in his car and ate what was given. On the right will be the sheep. On the left will be the goats. God is calling us as people of God to allow ourselves not only to be ones who provide for others, but to allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough to hear the hope in this scripture. That on those days when we're hungry, on those days when we're naked, on those days when we're in prison, we have a God who will send another creation of God into our lives to help clothe us, who will visit us, who will really help release us from our prison. We have a God who knows our very heart, but we, the people of God, have to have open up in our God, not only to be on the giving side, but to also be on the receiving side. For God to act in that place, it took two people. Brothers and sisters of Christ, if we're going to build the kingdom of God in the name of Christ our King, we have to be both givers and receivers. Because the life of a goat is a life of a cold heart, a life of a self-controlled person, a life of a self-built kingdom, a life of somebody who has no business for anybody else but themselves. But the life of the sheep, is one that's after the shepherd's heart. Let us, people of God, stay close to the shepherd 
And not only see the Jesus in others, but see the Christ in us. As we go forward this week, let us be thankful and begin to build the kingdom that Christ has established here on earth. Amen. Amen.